Today in the town of Springfield, little remains of what was once St. Mary's School for Indian Girls. Kevin Patton takes us back to look at the school and some of its students. We had a rigorous curriculum. We were never criticized. We were really encouraged. Expectations were high of us and, and we all rose to that level. Just prepared us for living in the modern world. Founded in 1873, St. Mary's Episcopal School for Indian Girls was first built near the banks of the Missouri River on the Santee Indian Reservation in Nebraska. When fire destroyed the Episcopal Mission in 1884, the school was rebuilt on the Rosebud Reservation in South Dakota. After two more fires destroyed the Rosebud buildings, the school was relocated to Springfield, South Dakota in 1923 where it occupied the abandoned Hope School building. Originally started as an industrial school, the students of St. Mary's were taught to wash, iron, cook, and sew with lessons in religion, English, and elementary school curricula. Unlike many Indian boarding schools of the time, which saw harsh discipline as a means to educate Native people, St. Mary's quickly gained a reputation for being lenient and for gently educating Indians into citizenship. As generations of students passed through the school, it became a family tradition for many. My grandmother had gone to St. Mary's, and then I also had two aunts who had gone to St. Mary's, and one of them was still there when I went. So I, uh, I had uh, people who knew, had good experiences there and thought that was the place for me to go, so that's why I went. I really didn't have much choice in the matter, but they, thought, they chose what they thought was best for me. My grandfather heard about St. Mary's School, and so he told me that after I graduate eighth grade, I'd have to go to St. Mary's School. He, he told me I had to go, and he said if he heard of it earlier, I could have been there already. I was supposed to go when I was in the seventh grade, and I didn't want to go, and I put up this big fuss, so my grandmother said, okay, you can stay home your seventh grade year, your eighth grade year, you're going. So my eighth grade year, I went to St. Mary's. I, I must have been about eight, nine years old, and I overheard my dad telling some company that he wanted to send me to St. Mary's School, and he spoke real highly of it. That was my first time ever away from home. Even I grew up out here at Walk Bomney Lake, and I never went anywhere. <clears throat> Just uh, maybe we'd go to um, Pine Ridge or Gordon or whatever, but I've never stayed away until I went off to St. Mary's as a freshman. It was like a little sister, big sister um, atmosphere. You know, we, we took the younger ones under our wing and, and you know, we'd braid their hair or, or uh, uh, read them stories. We got up awfully early in the morning. It was real structured. You know, we went to bed at a certain time, we got up at a certain time. We'd get up about um, six o'clock if you were on kitchen duty. Monthly, I, if I remember right, either working in the kitchen or dining room or cleaning or some aspect of housekeeping at the school. A bell would ring and we'd be here and a bell would ring would be there. It was one of those big bells. And so then wherever we were on campus, we knew we had five minutes to get to class. The headmistress when I was there was Bernice Holland and later Jones, Bernice Holland Jones. It was in 1932 when I graduated from college and I was there as a teacher for six years and then I became headmistress. We wanted to, to prepare the girls to go into any kind of situation in another culture where they would be so equipped that they would feel at home and comfortable and able to reach their potential. The school did, was teaching Latin. We taught Spanish. We, of course, made sure that the science program had a, a very good course in physics and chemistry. Tremendous emphasis, of course, was placed on English, the English language and English literature, so that they were prepared to, when they graduated, uh, be accepted in college and taken the normal courses, you see. 
since they had a good education and were ready for college, then they needed something else besides that. And we, we stressed etiquette and social graces and that kind of thing. Dressing for dinner, for example, uh, we had to do that every evening. Uh, we were taught table manners, um, how to pass food, and every once in a while we'd have a formal dinner where there was all kinds of silverware in front of us and different glasses. Not only learning how to set the table, but how to get along with people, you know, and, and uh, resolve conflicts in, in a peaceful way and, and making sure that you, you got along real well in that family setting. Exposing the girls to as many things as we could that would enhance their education. Mr. Call insisted that we attend um, symphonies and, and musicals that happened to be in, in Yankton at that time. Well, St. Mary's uh, made us feel as if we were uh, pretty important and that we could accomplish whatever we wanted to do if we tried hard enough. And, and we were told you know, you need to walk in both worlds. You know, we were told that. To be successful, you need to be, you know, be aware of what's there, and, but at the same time, be proud of who you are. Well, St. Mary's, I think it, um, it makes you aware, you know, that you, you're, there's two cultures. There's your Lakota culture, and there's uh, the dominant society. It helped me to, to interact and feel comfortable with different people. I mean, it's nice to be on the reservation, you know, and you, you see majority Indian people and you inter interact with them, but I'm also comfortable off the reservation. And I believe, you know, St. Mary's gave me that training and, and how, to, how to interact uh, positively with other cultures. We were always proud of who we are. We were always proud of our family. We were always proud of our culture. Um, that was one of the things that seemed to be, I don't know how they did it, but it, it was portrayed through whatever they did. So we were really felt good about ourselves. Even though the school was closed in 1986, the spirit of St. Mary's continues on through the former students and their accomplishments. Most graduates of St. Mary's have gone on to further their educations and many have returned to their communities to play active roles in helping to sustain and support their own people and cultures. Others, also equipped with graduate and professional degrees, have contributed greatly to society as a whole in positions such as authors, educators, lawyers, and medical professionals. Just be who you are, you know, and be proud of who you are. I think that's the greatest thing that I, I brought when I, when I left and I thank them for that. Whatever it was, whatever they did, <laughs> wish I could capture that. <laughs>